Hey guys, Sarge here from 100 Games 100 Days. Today I want to show you exactly how Hammurabi of Babylon's abilities work in Civilization 6. As always, we're going to go through some in-game examples to demonstrate their abilities so you understand just how this Civ works. Make sure you stick around to the end to see some amazing tile yields you can get with this Civilization's unique building. Let's take a look. Hammurabi's leader ability is Ninu Ilu Serum. When each specialty district type except the government plaza is constructed for the first time, receive the lowest production cost building that can currently be constructed in that district. Receive an envoy when any other district is constructed for the first time. So I can tell you that the districts that you will get your first free building in when constructed for the first time are the aerodrome, campus, commercial hub, encampment, entertainment complex, harbor, holy site, industrial zone, theater square, water park, and the diplomatic quarter. The non-specialty districts that give you an envoy is the aqueduct, the neighborhood, the dam, the canal, the government plaza, and the spaceport. The only district that doesn't give you anything, that's the city center itself. You did not get a free monument for building your first expansion city or even your first city. In this example, I've built every single district that you can build in the game as Babylon. So we have an aerodrome here that has a free hangar. We have a campus over here that has a free library. Commercial hub over here that has a free market. Campment over here that has the free barracks. Entertainment complex with the arena. We have a harbor building with a lighthouse. We have a holy site over here with the shrine. We have an industrial zone here with a free workshop. We have a theater square with an amphitheater. We have a water park here with a free ferris wheel. And most surprising to me was the diplomatic quarter. You do get the first building when building the diplomatic quarter. The non-specialty districts are the aqueduct, the neighborhood, the dam, the canal, the government plaza, and the spaceport. These non-specialty district buildings will give you a free envoy. They will not give you a building. And as described before, the city center will not give you a free monument when you build your first city. It's interesting to note that even though the neighborhood and the dam can both house a building, the food market, and the, the dam can hold the hydroelectric dam, you don't get that as a free building when you construct it. Another thing to note is that even though the barracks and the stable are kind of the same level of a building for the encampment, you will get the barracks instead of the stable, and that's because the barracks cost less in terms of production than the stable. Uh, surprisingly, the diplomatic quarter is a building where you do pick up the first building. So you can see we have the consulate building when we place down our diplomatic quarter. Unlike the government plaza, you do not get the first building when you place down your government plaza. I guess that's because there's three different buildings that all have the same production cost, and the game doesn't want to decide for you which free government building that you get but with the diplomatic quarter there's only one first building that you can get and that's the consulate building in this example if we place down a commercial hub here even though we have a commercial hub already in babylon we will not get the free market for placing down this district no market Keeping an eye on our envoy count here, in this example, I'm going to place an aqueduct in Babylon. And you'll note that because we already have an aqueduct in our empire already, we do not get a second envoy. Babylon's civilization ability is Anuma, Anu, and Lil. Eurekas provide all of the science for technologies and receive minus 50% science per turn. In this example in Babylon, I have three builders set up ready to put mines down. We have mining research. Now, if we put down three mines, we will get the boost to apprenticeship. So let's get these mines down and get the boost to apprenticeship. One mine, two mines, three mines. We just got an error score for being the first to the medieval era, and we just unlocked apprenticeship. It's interesting to note that you do not need the prerequisite technologies to get the full science from a Eureka boost. So we did not need currency for this. All we have to do is fulfill the boost. This is extremely powerful. It means you can skip so many techs to get to where you want in the tech tree. I'm not going to go through some of the strategies that you can use this for, but I will mention one really quickly is getting to pike and shots really quick. The so pike and shots are all the way over here in metal casting. And all you need for that is two crossbows. So if you're able to kill a unit with a slinger, build three archers to get your boost to crossbows, and then build two crossbows once you're in machinery or upgrade your current archers into crossbows, get just two of them, then you've unlocked metal casting really early. In this example, I want to highlight the minus 50% science per turn. It's calculated at the city level. If you hover over any of your cities and to the science, you can see where we're getting the science from. And then at the bottom, it says minus 50% for modifiers. So if we add 2 plus 6.5 plus 4 plus 1, that's 13.5. Half of that is 6.75. They've rounded it down to minus 0.67. So if we hover over our science at the top, you can see we're getting 0.67 from Babylon. And that's including the minus 50%. 
Babylon's unique unit is the Sabum Kibitum. It has plus 17 combat strength against heavy and light cavalry, and this unit has plus 3 movement and sight. That's unbelievable. Let's have a look at it, Gary. All right, it actually doesn't appear in the technology tree, but you can build it straight away. It costs 35 production compared to the Scout, which costs 30 production on standard speed. So for an extra 5 production, you're getting a unit that has a melee strength of 17 versus 10. It also has an additional 17 combat strength against heavy and light cavalry units. And it has an extra 1 sight over the Scout. One other thing to note is that it's a melee class unit. The Scout is a recon class unit, but the Sabum Kibitum is a melee class unit and it upgrades to a swordman. Like the scout, it also has no maintenance cost. If you compare it to a warrior, warrior costs 40 production, the Sabum Kibitum costs 35, so it's very close to a warrior. However, that extra sight, the extra movement over the warrior, and only three less combat strength, and you get that plus 17 against heavy and light cavalry units, I think it's pretty good. Having said that, there's probably not gonna be many instances where you have a Sabum Kibitum, where you're fighting against heavy and light cavalry units, maybe in a very early war, but most likely probably against barbarians that have horses nearby. In this example, I wanna show you a comparison between a Scout and a Sabum Kibitum to show you just how powerful the Sabum Kibitum is compared to the Scout. First of all, I'm gonna show you the Scout. We're on top of a jungle hill tile here, and we're getting two range on all directions here. So now I'm going to show you the Sabum Kidabum, and you can see that we get so much more vision with the Sabum Kidabum. We get three tiles away. Yes, it costs a little bit more than the Scout, but that extra vision is super powerful. In this example, I want to show off the Sabum Kibitum versus the Scout versus the Warrior versus a Barbarian Scout. If you click on the Sabum Kibitum, we are getting 10 versus 17 of the Sabum Kibitum, and we're doing about two-fifths of the damage and taking maybe one-sixth of the damage. The 37 damage done with just 20 to ourselves. The Scout on Scout did 25 damage and 24 damage to ourselves. And the warrior did 50 damage and 19 to itself. The Zabum Kibitum versus the Scout is very similar to the warrior. The warrior is a little bit more powerful, but it's still fairly strong. In this example, we're up against three barbarian warriors, so we'll do the same test. This time we're getting a minor defeat, but obviously you can use policy cards once you research Code of Laws to get that plus five unit combat strength and fighting barbarians, which is really important when you're doing early scouting. So again, the Sabum Kibitum lost a little bit more health than the Warrior, but they did about the same damage. Obviously, there's different RNG involved, but that's a guide. In this example, we are up against Barbarian Spearmen. Uh, as you can see, because the Sabum Kibitum is a melee class unit, it gets that plus 10 combat strength versus anti-cav units naturally, as does the Warrior. So we've got 27 versus 25 strength here. And we've got 30 versus 25 here. The Scout is going to have big trouble. In this example, we are up against Barbarian Horsemen. You might notice below we have a Byzantium Horseman as well. I just wanted to demonstrate that Barbarian Horsemen only have 20 base strength, whereas a normal Horseman has 36. It has 40 overall because we're playing on DT difficulty here. The Sabum Kibitum in this example is showing its true strength. We are getting 17 as our base strength and an extra 17 on top of that because we are up against a light cavalry unit here in the Barbarian Horseman. In this example, the Sabum Kibitum does way better than the Warrior. One of the best things about the Sabum Kibitum is that you get 4 error score just for building it for the first time. Babylon's unique building is the Palgrim. It provides 1 housing and 2 production. Every fresh water tile receives 1 food. The city must be next to a river in order to build the Palgrim. This unit comes in at irrigation. It replaces the watermill, which comes in at the wheel. The production cost is exactly the same as a watermill. But this, I'm just going to tell you flat out right now, this building is so strong. In this example, in Babylon, we have just built the Palgum. We can see that our plains hill tiles with rainforest on top of them are getting an extra one food each. And our grassland that normally has just two food is getting three food. Super powerful, especially if you can get some plains hill tiles with rainforest on them early in a game. If you compared this to a watermill, we would only be getting one food and one production. 
The Palgum alone gives you two production and one housing. The watermill gives you one food, one production, no housing, and you only get one extra food if you have a farmable resource inside of the city. So if we were to extend this city out to this rice and had a farm on it, this would give me six food in total because one extra food for the farm and one extra food for having the watermill in the city. However, the palgum goes this next level. Every single fresh water tile in this city that you work is gonna have one extra food. This is an amazing building. Build it as soon as you can. I've turned on settler mode to show you what fresh water tiles are. They are any tiles next to an oasis, a lake, or next to a river. Anything that we see that is green here is going to benefit from us building the palgum. In this example, I just wanted to show you something crazy that you can do with the palgum that has a lot of fresh water, the petrol wonder, and a lot of research tech. But the palgum is giving us all that extra food as well. And there you go. That's how Hammurabi of Babylon's abilities work in Civ 6. If you got something out of this video, please leave a like and subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this. I'd love to know how you've been finding Babylon. What victory conditions have you been going for? Have you struggled at all? Let me know in the comments below. Also, let me know if there's any future tutorials you'd like to see in future. I stream regularly on Twitch. Links to all that and socials are in the description. Thank you so much for watching, have a great day, and I'll see you next time.